Hello and welcome to another Coffee with Column, and thanks very much for tuning in. The objective behind the series is whereby I take elements of my own business journey as chronicled in my book, Feeding Johnny How to Build a Business Despite the Roadblocks, and then over a cup of coffee for about five minutes or so on a weekly basis, share an element, share a lesson that I've learned along the way in the hopes that by me sharing it out there, it'll afford you a shortcut where back in the day I had none. And this week I want to talk about bullying. As part of my role as founder and MD of Carambola Kids, where we supply school lunches all around the country, uh, I often go and talk to small groups of children. And uh, as it happens last week, I had a small group of children visit uh, Carambola headquarters. They ranged in age from five years to 12 years. And truthfully, I struggled with trying to figure out how I was going to talk to such a diverse group. Seven years gap at that stage and their development is quite large. Anyway, I decided to tell them a particular story which related to bullying. And uh, the story is Stephen's story. And so I want to relate Stephen's story to you, if I may. Stephen was bullied in third class. He was bullied in fourth class. He was bullied again in fifth class. And he was bullied again in sixth class. And his parents never knew. And then he changed schools. And as happens, the school, the, his sixth class kids that he'd uh, been in school with all went to different schools. So he thought to himself, great, I have a new opportunity to start again with a whole new bunch of guys. And uh, he thought his troubles were over. But in fact, they weren't because in first year, Stephen was bullied and he was bullied again in second year and he was bullied again in third year. Now, by the time he got to third year, Stephen had had enough. And of course, you and I both know that unfortunately, there are very many tragic endings to stories like this. So what Stephen did, he decided to take matters into his own hands and he decided to tackle his bullies. Now, he didn't tackle them physically because, of course, that would have uh, defeated the purpose. <laughs> uh, however, he was brave enough and his self-esteem had grown enough to the point where he decided he needed to do something. So he went and met the guys and he called them to one side and he said, Les, this is crazy. I've decided I'm OK and I've decided you're OK and I've decided we're simply different and that's OK. So let's get past all this rubbish and get on with our lives. And as it happens, that's exactly what they did. They decided to shake hands. They didn't exactly become bosom buddies, but they decided to shake hands and get on with uh, life in general. And Stephen, thankfully, is a healthy adult uh, today. However, a couple of things came to mind. And uh, in talking to this group of kids and telling them Stephen's story, I began to tell them about the three parties in uh, every bullying act. Because I, at one stage, used to think there were only two. I used to think there was a bully and there was a person being bullied. There were two sides of the same coin, uh, neither side a good place to be. Nobody wants to be bullied. And truthfully, I don't believe anybody wants to be a bully. Uh, but there's always a bully and there's always a person being bullied. But what I figured out recently is, in fact, there are three people in every act of bullying. There must be three people in every act of bullying. Let me explain. There's the bully, clearly. There's the person being bullied, clearly. The third person is the person who knows what's going on and decides to do nothing about it. And the third person is the bystander. And in Stephen's particular case, he didn't tell his parents what was going on so they couldn't help. He didn't tell his teachers what was going on because so they couldn't help. But there were bystanders involved and the bystanders did nothing either. And here's the point. If a bystander purports to be on the side of the person being bullied but does nothing, well, then his actions or her actions actually dictate they're on the side of the bully. Not a good place to be. So there are always three parties to any bullying act. There's the person, the bully, there's the person being bullied, and there's the bystander. And so within days of talking to this small group of children where we spoke about the three characters in the play that is bullying, the bully, the person being bullied and the bystander, and asking them to make sure that they're, uh, they play no part in bullying, uh, all of a sudden uh, in the media, we get a situation where President Trump in the States has decided to bully his way into uh, creating barriers of entry for um, all people from certain Muslim countries. And in my world, that's him acting as a bully. And in my world, that's all of those innocent people. I'm quite sure there are some guilty parties out there as there are in every walk of life and every nation and every creed. But in the majority of cases, we're talking about innocent people and all innocent people have been tired of the same brush by President Trump's bullying tactic. So you've got President Trump, in my opinion, bullying. You've got the people on the other side being bullied. And in the middle, what have you got? You've got bystanders. You've got many, many people who just decide to do nothing. And I simply decided to do something about it. And I put some uh, personal views out on Facebook. I'm not expecting everybody to agree with me. That's entirely their prerogative. I don't need them to agree with me. I just need to be able to express my view. 
So I'm using these three elements that have come together in the last few days to paint a picture for you and, and to ask you a question. I'm using the fact that I spoke to these young children about the act of bullying and told them Stephen's story. And uh, as it happens, then President Trump on the world stage engaged in it. And I felt it was appropriate to put it out there as a message to you people. And the question really I'd like you to ask of yourself is, are you involved in bullying? Now, I suspect that you're not a bully. I hope you're not being bullied. But a question for you and for me is, are you a bystander? And if you're a bystander, I really would urge that you would do something about it. So please, 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 in this next week, let's all agree to take some steps. Let's take steps to make sure there's nobody in our families involved in bullying in any one of the three uh, legs in bullying. Let's, uh, let's make sure there's nobody involved in bullying within our organizations that we operate within and within our client base. Let's do what we can in our own small way to stamp out bullying. If we can stamp it out in our own world, the ripple effects will spread and perhaps we can influence the world at large. So thank you for listening. Oh, and by the way, Stephen, he's 24, he's my son, and I'm the proudest dad in the world. And thank you for joining me for this week's Coffee with Callum and indulging me indeed as I went off on a slight tangent from the usual business fair, uh, given the week that's in it. If you've enjoyed it and you think somebody else would benefit, I'd be delighted if you pass the link on. If it's your first time coming across, it's Coffee with Callum and you've enjoyed it, you'd like more of this type of stuff, go to the homepage, callumobrianmotivation.com, leave me your details, and I'll make sure you get a link like this every week or so. If you'd like to leave me a comment, I'd be delighted to hear from you. Go to the bottom of the blog and do so. And please consider what's been shared here today and apply it into your thinking for the next week or so. And then most importantly, please come back next week and let's share another coffee together. I'll take another lesson that I'm learning as I go through my business journey, another snippet perhaps from the book Feed and Johnny and share it out there for you to consider in the hopes that it'll add value to your journey and mine. Meantime, keep the faith, get some good coffee, get some good rest, get organized for the week ahead and we'll see you soon. Bye for now. Blow my coffee. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.